So today I want to talk a little bit about this missing time variable that I mentioned in my last video. So um, as I said, uh, Planck's energy equation, which originally was written, traditionally is written like this, is missing a time variable. It is my opinion that this is the equation of an experiment and it is missing the time variable. And for the record, I'm not the only one that thinks this. There is another uh, researcher out there who I studied uh, extensively. I read all of her papers and referenced her in some of my work. Her name is Juliana Mortensen Brooks. And so I will leave a link to this uh, paper. I'll actually leave, leave a link to um, a website that has links to all of her papers and you can do your own research. She did a, a huge research. She did a lot of research into uh, Planck's original writings and so um, I you know which I was able to leverage and so um, I think uh, she has done a great job and so I'd like to uh, point you to her work. So what I want to do is I want to give you a practical example using something that I am actually very familiar with. So as you may or may not know, I work in the field of medical imaging. I develop software for medical devices that are used for um, you know surgical medical and surgical procedures. And so my area of expertise is three-dimensional ultrasound. And uh, so what we do in three-dimensional ultrasound is we collect a sequence of images over time and we reconstruct them into three-dimensional volumes. And so it's very important for me to coordinate the motion of these transducers, whether it be linear, linearly or radially or um, in a fan-like um, configuration. And so I think the linear scan is actually the easiest to understand. Um, so what we do is we translate a ultrasound transducer, transducer over a uh, linear distance and we collect images. So we have images coming in at some frame rate, uh, some frequency, uh, and we collect those images and we stack them and then we reconstruct them into a three-dimensional volume. So in order for my software to work correctly, I need to allocate the right, correct amount of memory to store all the images that I collect during the, the scanning procedure. And so what I've done here is I've written an equation that looks very much like this equation. Okay, it's very similar. So um, I need to know how much memory to allocate uh, so what I do is, you know, I have this equation here. So the amount of memory that I need to allocate is equal to H, which is the amount of memory of one image, times the frequency, which is the number of frames that are coming in per second. So in the system that I'm developing, uh, the frames happen to be coming in at 30 frames per second. So a 3D ultrasound scan takes 10 seconds. So if the 3D ultrasound uh, scan takes 10 seconds and I am collecting 30 frames per second, uh, how much memory do I need to allocate? That is the question. I need to write, I needed to write the computer program to solve this problem. So when you look at this equation here, hopefully you can see that there is, so I have a uh, placeholder for the memory for one image. I have a variable for the uh, memory for one image. I have a variable for the images per second, the frequency of the images coming in, but I don't have a variable for this 10 second measure time. What I need to do is I need to do that. So in order for me to write a computer program, I need to have a variable name for this, a variable name for this, a variable name for, vi for this, and I need a variable name for the 10 second uh, time that it takes for me to acquire all the images to create my 3D ultrasound image. If I don't put this measure time into the equation, 
then I can only calculate, I can only allocate, calculate the amount of memory I need for a one second scan. I cannot allocate the memory for a 10 second scan because I don't have a variable to put that 10 seconds into my computer program. So being a computer scientist, I think is really beneficial, at least for me, in trying to understand this. Okay, to me, uh, this is uh, analogous to this, very, very analogous to this. And um, it seems to me that um, the, there is a missing measure time in this equation. This equation was meant to be the equation of an experiment. And if when I went to try to write the computer program for this, that's where I ran into trouble. I, I, I realized there was something missing. And when I did the analogy in my head, when I made it analogous to something that I'm familiar with, I've been working in this field since 1993. I wrote my first 3D ultrasound acquisition software in 1993. So I'm very familiar with this technology. I'm very familiar with this language. And that is what helped me to see the problem that I believe is going on here. So writing the equation like this and saying that this is the energy of a photon is analogous to me writing this equation and saying that this is the memory of one image on. Okay, now I think you can see how ridiculous that sounds that this is the memory of one image on. This is not the memory of one image on, this is the memory of one seconds worth of uh, frames that are coming in at 30 frames a second. And by analogy, this is the energy of, um, of the of a number of uh, energy units that are coming in at some frequency. So that's all I'm going to say about this uh, for now. Uh, the reason I'm making this video is because while well, I'm arguing with someone about this on my YouTube channel, and I feel like I'm better at expressing myself in videos than I am at, at you know, with a small comment on my YouTube channel. So it's much easier for me to explain myself and to give my analogies in a video. And so that is why I made this video. And hopefully this will help you, give you a better understanding of what I'm, the points that I'm trying to make in my uh, own particle model.